Hey guys, in this video we're looking at properties of logarithms and I have um, at the top of the notes the properties of exponents. Uh, I'll just refer back to these as we need them in the section, but they'll show up a little bit. Properties of logarithms, so we have kind of three main ones that I'm going to end up treating kind of all as one. And I'll show you that as we go through the problems. Um, but the basics are if you have two things multiplying in the logarithm, you can write it as a sum of uh, two logarithms. If you have two things dividing, then you can write it as a difference, minus sign. And then if you have an exponent up here, you can bring it down front and write it as a multiplication. Um, these, so logs are exponents, so these are actually the properties of exponents up here. Um, when we're adding, that was two things multiplying, we add. So when we're multiplying with exponents, we add. With uh, things sub uh, dividing, we subtract. That is, where is it right here, number two. When you have things dividing, we subtract the exponents. And this one's number three. Um, when we're raising something to a power, we multiply the exponents. So the R comes down front because the log's an exponent, so then they're multiplying. Uh, the other couple, uh, these are properties, but um, if you have log base b of b, uh, it's going to be 1, because like, say, log base 10 of 10, what do you raise 10 to to get 10? 1. Um, log base b of 1, always 0, because what do I raise something to to get 1? would be 0. So anytime we see those, we, can, we know we have either a 1 or a 0. So we have um, kind of three distinct ideas in this section. Uh, the first one's going to be expanding uh, logarithms, um, which is basically we're just rewriting them in a different form. And the next one after that will be taking kind of the answers in these and getting back to the question. Uh, so writing as a single log. And then at the end, we'll look at some uh, log equations. So for this first one, for expanding, um, basically this is like we're given something like this side and we're trying to write it like this side. When we do the write as a single log, we'll be looking at something this way, I'm trying to get back here. So um, since these are multiplying, it's an addition, that's property one. So log seven plus log x. Number two, uh, the dividing, so that's going to be a subtract or a difference of the logs. And number three is kind of showing property three, so this is property one, two, and three. When I have a power, then they multiply. And so that's kind of the three properties, how they look in a problem. Um, everything after this is kind of a combination thereof. Uh, so right here, I have this uh, square root x, and we need to remember that we can write that as a fractional exponent. Uh, so that's right here in the notes, uh, x to the one half is the same thing as square root x, or in general, one over the index um, equals the root. So this is like a cube root, this is a one third. And we're going to need that because we have this property down here that says I can deal with exponents by bringing them in front. So we'll need to take our roots and rewrite them as uh, fractional exponents. <clears throat> so right here we're going to do log x to the one half and then y to the fourth. And if I wanted to do steps, I could say, well, these are multiplying, so that means I could write them as addition. And then, I, so that was applying property one. And then I could apply property three and bring the exponents down. But there's no reason I can't do that all in one step. And that's kind of what we're aiming for in this section. So if you notice, um, the exponents become the coefficients of the logs uh, for whichever one they're associated with. And here, they're both in the numerator. Like if this was a fraction, the denominator would be down here. And so they're both positive, or since it was addition, they're both positive. There's no denominator in the problem. So this one, the hardest part is probably getting it in the form where we can work with it. So I'm going to rewrite this as log 7, and then parentheses xy to the 12th. And then we write that as a 1 fourth. And then when we're raising to a power, we multiply. So there's like an invisible one there. So this would be log 7 x to the 1 fourth, and then 1 fourth of 12 would make that a 3, or 12 divided by 4. And so now I have it in the form of the other ones, I can, um, now I can expand it. And so like I said, the exponents are going to become the coefficients for whichever log um, they're associated with. So try to do this all in one step. We're going to do 1 fourth log base 7 x, and then plus, oops, 3 log 
A7Y. So this one, um, this is the one where I try to hopefully get you to see that you can use all three properties together kind of simultaneously. And it's much, much easier than if you like, say, followed the book. And the book would show this in several steps. And that's, it's one way to look at it. But um, to me, I think thinking of it this way is so much easier. You don't have to keep track of parentheses. So if I have this, I can rewrite that as this. So remember there's that property that says if I have, well actually it's right here, if I have a negative exponent, I can rewrite it downstairs. So if it's downstairs, I can also rewrite it as the negative exponent. I can go the other direction. So I'm gonna write this as c to the negative four and d to the negative five, right? If I fix those, it would just be right back down here. So now they're all multiplying. Um, so I'm going to have four logs because I have four letters. Uh, these are going to be my coefficients of my logs. And you can see anything from the denominator comes up with a negative coefficient. And that's that subtraction that we saw in property two. So rather than doing all kinds of steps on this, I'm just going to go. So it's going to be two log A. And the two is positive because it started in the numerator. And then plus three log B. Again, positive from the numerator. And then it would be minus four log c, so negatives coming from the denominator, and same with the d, minus 5 log d. So if you can look at it that way, it's so much better, to me at least, than having to sort of treat these as uh, this minus this, and you have these two additions in there, and you have to be careful to distribute the signs so this, this gets the negative. Like, it's just really complicated that way. But if you realize sort of what all the pieces are doing, and why they're doing it, um, then you can just kind of go straight to the answer. Number seven, um, I'm going to treat that one or cube root as a one third. So we'll write it x and then y to the one third and z squared. And then if I expand that, it's going to be um, log x. So no power on the x, so just an invisible one here. And then plus one third log y <clears throat> and then z is in the denominator so minus two log z and the way this is going to look in xyz is they're going to give you this and then you're going to plug in um, the values that you have so you're kind of matching their little template to your answer so we have an invisible one right there so then a log b would be one to the x and c that's going to be the one third D is going to be the uh, Y. And they gave you the minus sign, so E is just 2, and F would be Z. So that's how you're going to input them in the computer. Okay, and these would be the ones I would have you try. So um, this first one goes uh, 5 log X, and um, so power comes down front, and then the Y would just be a plain log y, because it's to the first, so we don't see anything. This one, so we're going to treat this as x to the 1 sixth. So this would be um, 1 sixth log x. And then the y is downstairs, so minus 3 log y. So this would go, x is going to be a 2 log x. That's y to the 1 half. Right? So that'll be um, plus, because it's in the numerator, one half log y. And then this will be a minus, because it's in the denominator, so minus three log z. And then this one we're gonna have to do um, a little bit of algebra two to get it in the right form. So I'm gonna do the log, and then big parenthesis, x15, y2, z10 to the one-fifth. And so one-fifth of 15 would make a three. And then one-fifth of two doesn't really work, so just two-fifths. And one-fifth of 10, or five into 10, would be z squared. So now expanding this, I would have three log uh, x. And these two are in the denominator, so they'll both be negative, minus two-fifths log y and minus 2 log z. 
So this is the uh, second style problem. So this is write as a single log, so we're going the other direction. So for writing as a single log, I want you to write the word log down one time and then resist the urge to put log, 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 log everywhere. Um, I get that a lot in exams. So this one has a minus, so I know there's gonna be a, a numerator and denominator. Um, the four is with the X term and it's positive, so that means it was the uh, exponent and it was in the numerator. The two goes with the Y, it's negative, so that means the Y has to be downstairs and squared. Um, and the computer, it has the log three already in front, so you're just gonna need to put in um, the argument of the log, this part. So this one, again, write down log once and then resist the urge. Uh, this is plus, so they're both gonna be in the numerator, so it'll be X to the one fourth and then Y squared. And you could also do log fourth root X and Y squared. I believe the computer will take either, as would I, um, so they're both totally correct. Uh, 14, this would be log uh, x to the one half, so I'll write that as square root x, um, y cubed downstairs, and z to the fourth downstairs. Okay, these are the ones I'd have you guys try. So, log, um, x, so the 4 is positive, so the x is up top. The y is negative, and it's, it'd be like a negative 1, so just plain y. And then um, right here, it went back to a positive, which could totally happen. So that means we're back in the numerator with z cubed. And for 16, we'll do log um, 1 fourth x, so that's the fourth root of x. y to the fifth downstairs, because negative likewise z cubed. So then we get to log equations. And log equations, there's steps and you just you just want to follow the steps. Um, so if we have a log equation, the first thing we want to do is write it as a single log, which is what we we're just doing. Uh, then we're going to change to exponential form. So that's that if I have, say, log base 10, 100 equals 2, that's our log form, then 10 squared makes 100. So we're trying to make it look like this in step two. Um, if it's linear, we do x's to one side, numbers to the other. If it's quadratic, uh, same old set to zero, and then factor and solve. If yours isn't factoring, yours is wrong. Everything in here factors. Um, so check your work right here. It's usually on the test going from here to here where people have trouble. Um, and then we can't take the log of a negative number or zero, uh, so we have to check for extraneous solutions. So let's look at a couple. Um, this first one's going to go log base 3. x4 looks funny, so I'm going to write it 4x equals 2. So now I wrote it as a single log. So that's step 1. Step 2 is changed to exponential form. So 3 squared makes the stuff inside. And a lot of times people just sort of pretend like the log isn't there. And it is, so you got to go 3 squared equals 4x. Um, and not lose that 3. So this would be 9 equals 4x, and 9 fourths would equal x. 9 fourths is positive, so no problems. Checked for log of negative. Um, this next one, we got log base 3, x plus 3, x minus 1 equals 1. So then we're going to do 3 raised to the first equals the stuff in the parentheses there. So 3 to the first equals x plus 3, x minus 1. So we ended up with a rational equation, but we can just um, multiply both sides by x minus 1. And then that clears the fraction. So then I got um, 3x minus 3 equals x plus 3. I'm going to subtract this x over here and get 2x. I'm going to add the 3 over to this side and get 6 and then divide by 2. So x equals 3. If I put that back in the equation, 3 plus 3 is 6, so that stays positive. 3 minus 1 is 2, so that stays positive. For number 19, um, it's an addition, so we'll write it as a multiply. Multiply. 
and then change to exponential form. So 4 squared equals x times x would be x squared. x times 6 would be 6x. And that's going to be 16 equals x squared plus 6x. So this is um, a quadratic, so I want to get equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 16 off of both sides. And 0 equals x squared plus 6x minus 16. And now I can factor. So what multiplies to be negative 16 and adds to be positive 6 would be a plus 8 and a minus 2. So my possible solutions are negative 8 and 2. Except negative 8 can't work because it's a negative. And if I put 2 in, it keeps both those positives. So that is good. Um, number 20, this one is involving a natural log. Doesn't It works exactly the same. Um, we just want to... Um, in this case, give an exact answer, which would be in the directions for the problem. So I want to get the log by itself. I want to have it as a single log. So this 5 multiplying, I'm just going to divide both sides by 5. And then that's going to make this be natural log of x minus 3 equals 4. And then remember with these, there's that ln means that there's an invisible e right here for the base. And so it'll go e raised to the fourth equals the stuff inside. So it's that same step, it's just with the natural log. We're changing to exponential form. So e to the fourth equals x minus 3, and add the 3 over. That's it. Okay, and these last ones are the ones that have you try. So this one is um, log 4 and then 5, and it's plus, so it'll be 5 times x equals 2. And so then 4 to the second equals 5x. So that's going to go 16 equals 5x, divide over the 5, and 16 fifths equals x, which is positive, so we're all good. This one would go um, log base 3, it's a minus, so it's going to be x over 2 equals 3. So 3 to the third equals that. So that's really 9. And then we'll just multiply both sides by 2. And we get uh, 18 equals x, uh, which is, which checks, keeps it positive. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, 3 cubed, 27. I got it 3 times 3. And then th that would make this 54. There we go. Number 23, uh, it's a subtraction, so it's a divide. So log base 5, this would go 2x over x minus 1 equals 1. And so we'll do 5 to the first equals the stuff inside. 5 raised to the first equals 2x, x minus 1. So we'll clear the denominator again. And those cancel. So now I can go 5x and 5 times negative 1 for negative 5 equals 2x. And then I'm going to bring the 2x over. So I'd have 3x minus 5 equals 0, and then add the 5 over. So 3x equals 5. And once I got that, divide out the 3 on both sides, and x is 5 thirds. And then this last one, so addition, so it's a multiply. So that's going to go log base 2 of x plus 1, x plus 3 equals 3. So 3 to the third equals the stuff. I'm sorry, 2 to the third equals the stuff. And I think I will foil as I go, just so I don't run out of space. So x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Three 1 times x, and then plus 3. So then collecting, that's going to be 8x squared uh, plus 4x plus 3. And I'll bring this 8 over. 
So we have 0 equals x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then from there we can factor. So that's going to look like x plus 5 and x minus 1. And we get x equals negative 5, but that makes both those negatives. That one's no good. x equals 1 keeps both positive, so that one's our solution.